Welcome back to Good Morning Tobago on Tobago Updates viewers. You know, it is just about five days before Christmas. Things are getting spicy and you know, all the merriment is surrounding a lot of people. But is it really touching where the money is? And I mean, let's say that, you know, we are hearing some complaints from the business community about what's happening with sales and it doesn't seem to be looking like a good year so far so to give us a perspective on what's been happening we are joined by the vice chairman of the tobago division of the trans tobago chamber of industry and commerce mr demi john crookshank good morning and welcome to you good morning morning candace morning to all your visitor your viewers everybody uh and the listeners of tobago updates uh how are you <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay. It's Tuesday yeah. mornings, a few days before Christmas, so I'm looking for a nice Christmas. But is it going to be a nice Christmas for the business community? Uh, well, this year has been extremely slow. It has been a slow Christmas in terms of sales. Uh, I'm not too sure what will happen in the next few days. We're hoping that, uh, you know, we can have some push in terms of sales. People will get paid today from the public service. Uh, a couple of people will get pay. I see teachers gonna get back pay. I'm not too sure if that happened in, in Tobago. Uh, but we're hoping within the next uh, couple of days we can see some rush in the supermarkets. We drove around yesterday. The place was a bit quiet. Um, Scarborough quiet, Crown Point area quiet. So we're hoping from today, kicking into Friday, Saturday, we can see the normal Christmas rush that we, we think. I just spoke to one of the uh, a business owner who normally has a they cater for Christmas and she said uh, you know it's still slow and she's hopeful that things will pick up so we can be optimistic mm -hmm. and we can be hopeful at the end of the day we have to move on we, we have to go beyond COVID we have to go beyond what what is happening now and we have to go back to pre-COVID numbers in terms of business and and what will happen so we are very optimistic as to what will happen well, is it that we want to go back to pre-COVID numbers or pre-Seabridge fiasco numbers? Well, <clears throat> uh, the Seabridge issue will solve. I can tell the Tobago public now because I'm on a committee dealing with the Seabridge. The that situation will come to an end uh, very shortly, within the next two months or so. Uh, the, the, the two fast ferries that we have operating will, will be serviced. The TNT spirit will return to service just now. The cab, the Galleon Passage will uh, continue, and then the Cabo Star and the the issue of the of the cruise ship co cruise ship complex that will come to an end very shortly. Mm -hmm. Right. So those things won't happen. We will have hopefully good traveling traffic on the sea bridge. The air bridge is another thing that we need to sit with Carl and and go through twenty twenty four. What we hope we see flight is back up to 10.45 out of Tobago so that is good uh, so we're gonna try to get the numbers in terms of people coming to the island and business kicking in I am very optimistic <laughs> very very optimistic for 2024 very very optimistic uh, we cannot have another 2023 certainly we have to look at how we're going in terms of 2024 and we have to be very optimistic now when we look at um, just like focusing on Christmas for, for now what has it been like in the past and um about like what's the trends that we normally see around christmas times and so on so that uh, we can just get a better understanding of you know what's the state of things within the economy at this point in time well uh all now in tobago you know that's it, the whole place would have been busy traffic people with bags shopping children toys stores we're not even seeing christmas trees or Christmas lights in, in terms of people business place because people say listen I just depressed I'm telling people yes it was challenging in 2023 uh, we have hope for 2024 and we have to look at the positives that will happen in 2024 mm -hmm. I am not gonna look at any of the negatives at all right uh, we have to look at what Tobago can do in terms of the general economy we have to see how we can think the cruise ship season grew this year and I, and I must comment you know send kudos where kudos is uh the secretary for tourism did a good job in terms of increasing the tourism if one person make a dollar in tobago that was one dollar you would not have made right mm -hmm. so so that alone would have been a good indicator 
uh, the THA is now settling down. I think it's a, a little bit late, but it's, they are now settling down. Uh, the THA has indicated that they're going to have structured meetings with the business community. Yeah. Right? So we're going to meet the Chief Secretary, the Executive Council. We're going to tell them the pain and the problems that we had for the last two years because we have not been meeting with the Assembly on a regular basis. We're going to do that. Uh, so we're going to try to see how we can make this place the best little island on the planet, <laughs> you know. And uh, we have to really and truly push new business. Uh, yesterday, we in the chamber, we met with the Tobago East Biz Chamber. Some young fellas, very, very ambitious. A nice group of guys. And, you know, and we encouraged them yesterday. We shared some ideas with them in terms of what they should do in terms of business and how you can you know get the eastern end of tobago up and running again and they are very excited that is what we want in tobago that is the part you want i am fed up coming on tv to complain <laughs> about this and working that and working plane and flying a boat and working cargo ship and thing they, we know we have those problems we have to try to fix them once and for all and those are fixable items and i as i just said to you i i know uh, it, it's left to the port authority to make the announcements but those things will be fixed right uh and if we can sit down with cal very early in 2024 and get back the flights to uh one o'clock in the morning and because a lot of people prefer those times so we we, we we need to get people moving on the island we cannot sit down and look at the whole caribbean booming hmm. and tobago in a mess I, I i cannot sit here and, and think that. now as you mentioned you know you're, i know you're tired of complaining about what didn't work and what worked when was the last time that you could safely say that the economy in tobago was okay that like for instance christmas time was a good christmas time um 2021 wasn't bad uh the 2021 time wasn't bad at all uh before that you would have had probably around 20 2017 2019 wasn't too bad i think what what happened in tobago is simple you need to spread the money around small contracts small contractors the big contracts do not help the tobago economy and and this is something that we have to sit down and discuss with the assembly the big contracts yes you might want big projects but it does not help the small man on the ground when you have things like the access roads mm -hmm. program every single truck backhoe excavator mini excavator is working in tobago for small money when you have like the school repair program it's spread around to a lot of small contractors they so so what you will have is people have money to spend when you have big contracts and you bring in people from trinidad their interest is to get the job done, get all their money, and head back to Trinidad or head out of Tobago, wherever they come from. It doesn't help the Tobago economy really, actually. They will bring all their food from Trinidad. They will bring everything. They, they wouldn't spend. So you have to look at how you can set up your local people. We have to look at how we can export out of Tobago. I fed up hearing that uh, Tobago doesn't export anything. <laughs> that has to be a trust by the THA. The Minister of Trade came here and she gave us a whole set of information that we didn't know we have to look at exporting out of tobago at least one company just get one good brand to export something and say this is a brand out of tobago that is exporting and exporting consistently uh, so those are the things that we have to look at for 2024 especially sitting with both stha and central government because at the chamber level we, we really don't care who we again care about the politics we care about business and about the economy and things moving fast so it might be slow this year uh the banks are coming to the table the senior members in terms of the four commercial banks uh republic bank started it we met with them uh, because they have the largest portfolio of the business customers on the island so they came i think we met with them last week thursday or sometime or friday we're going to meet with Royal, we're going to meet with FCB, and we're going to meet with Scotia. So at least they understand that the economy is not performing as it should be. And they are asking, how can they help? Mm -hmm. So we have to get partners in terms of the private sector, in terms of funding, to, to meet with them. And coming back to the Christmas season a little bit, what, um, what are you seeing when you break it down into the different sectors? Whereas the hardware, retail, 
the groceries? What 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 is the business right. community noticing at this point in time? Well, with the hardware, with the with the in Tobago, I could deal with the hardware first because that's my main business. The hardware is really and truly they operate from October, November. That is the peak mm -hmm. because people want to buy material to fix up their home. The hardware don't get a lot of business around now. Now is toys, ham, uh, grocery, uh, party stuff, those kind of things you're going to see happening now. So now you would see the supermarkets falling up. People go to the hardware for paint now, touching up, the liquor thing. But basically now is the time for the grocery, the supermarkets, uh, the liquor on the, the, the confetti stores, those kind of things. People who want to do... Uh, to fix up their home nice, the bulbs, the Christmas tree, uh, the, the vendors on the road. Uh, those are the people who you will expect to have a turnover right now. Right? Uh, alcohol. You could, the alcohol people now is a festive time. You, you know, the, 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 the liquor distribution people. So people like those will make money now. Right? Uh, we're looking at the numbers. We've been in contact with Carib. We've been in contact with Amco. We've been in contact on a daily basis. Tell me what your numbers looking like. How is looking? How is picking up? Uh, if you notice, there's about the cargo stars in the yes. harbor, right? That wasn't by chance. The boat sailed uh, last week, Friday, and they left back about 100 trucks mm -hmm. on, in Trinidad. So immediately we called, we spoke to the chairman at the port and said, listen, we know the next sailing is, is Tuesday, is Wednesday, but we need a sailing. I don't care. The cruise ship is leaving 6 o'clock in, in, in the evening in Trinidad. Put on the boat to sail nine, 8 o'clock in the night. So the boat left Trinidad 8 o'clock last night. It's up here and it's going to go back down today to pick up the sailing tomorrow. So we got an additional sailing. Um, lo we're looking at the additional schedule for, for the Christmas because... For the whole Christmas season, there is no cargo vessel. So we're going to talk to the port later on today and try to put in two sailings within that time to get goods coming because uh, we want people to come to the island. You know, we want people to consume. A lot of people have has booked their, 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 their vacation and they are coming. The villa people told us that they are full for Christmas, which is a good thing. The bed and breakfast people say that they, they're not full totally, but they're at least up there in terms of the good numbers and thing. Tobago is a safe place. So families come into Tobago to, to, for the Christmas. So we're going to push that and we're going to make sure that they are food, they are water, they are alcohol, especially alcohol, uh, ham, all these things. They, we're going to make sure that it's on the island so nobody can say that they run out of anything. Mm -hmm. And I think everybody's on board. We've been talking, we've been meeting, we've been doing conference calls every day up to last night. We had conference call with some of the distributors in terms of what, what we have to do. All right. Well, we're going to take a quick break, but we'll be right back with Mr. Demi John Crookshack as we discuss what's happening with the business community here in Tobago. So don't go in. Welcome back to Good Morning Tobago on Tobago Updates. Viewers, we are chatting this morning with the Vice Chairman of the Tobago Division of the Trans-Tobago Chamber of the Industry and Commerce, and that is Mr. Demi John Crookshack. As we see, take a look at what's happening within the business community in Tobago. And of course, before we went to the break, if you were following, we were discussing some of the things that's happening actually in the economy as it relates to Christmas. But also, we're hearing uh, as well some noise as it pertains to the importation of goods into the country and the clearing of goods mm -hmm. at yeah. the ports in Trinidad, Trinidad before it can be released to the couriers and, and the business community and so on. What's been going on there from your perspective? Uh, well, it's something that I the, the Trinidad division took up. I saw it on, on the, the chat mm -hmm. and uh, apparently there's an issue with customs. Customs is not clearing as fast as the, the auto. So there's a massive backlog of cargo in Trinidad. So people would have brought in their stuff. I think this is happening more than two weeks going on. So there's a serious backlog of cargo in Trinidad. I, I know one of the, the businessmen in Tobago who imports stuff told me he had a container in Trinidad about three weeks now. Can't get his container out of customs, right? A normal routine container that will come clear within a couple of days. So there's a serious backlog in Trinidad. And I I'm not too sure how they're going to adjust that. Uh, we're not going to make any noise about it as yet because we do not have the details about it. 
but i know there is a serious problem with getting goods out of customs especially in the point lisa sport and uh, some people reporting in piaco and on in so also in port of spain so it's it's a island-wide problem in trinidad with the the custom officers i'm not too sure if it's a, a walk to rule if it's a strike if it's a what it is but there is a sea or is there's too much cargo coming in the country at the same time but there is a serious problem on in trinidad with cargo and it's affecting the business people in Trinidad. how would how would how would it affect us how, uh, what are you seeing in terms of have you been speaking with the business community especially those that depend on those well yeah they they, they, they just don't have the goods to sell for christmas right they thought that the goods would have been here already and they would have been able to 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 think there's a problem in panama also uh in terms of ships passing through the canal i spoke to one of the car dealers uh panama has a drought going on so the water levels is low so they're not allowing the amount of ships at the same time to pass through so they have cars on the ship boat stuck out outside of panama for a couple of weeks now and the ship can't come in so i saw it on cnn it's, it's a problem because they can't get cargo coming through the panama canal to get to here so a wrong <laughs> it's a challenge yeah. you know it's just a challenge to operate business on the island uh i am not too sure how we're gonna solve that because it's really a trinidad problem it's not a tobago problem in terms of customs and getting mm -hmm. goods out of the thing so um uh, it's a bigger problem that the minister of trade and the people minister of finance will have to deal with and this is the week before christmas if people can't get their goods already when they're gonna get it for sale so that is a challenge and, and it will look uh, you'll have to look at your bottom line in terms of what you was expecting to earn you're not going to earn it again so um can it be pushed off in january january is normally a slow month for business uh people spend in christmas but they, they don't spend in january because one they do have money again money spent out people have to wait until month 10 to get and paid. january is a very long month and january is a <laughs> very very long month and you know people take the time and take. so it's it's challenging all over challenging all over but i'm hoping you know in 2024 i am i am really actually looking for 2024 eh? <laughs> you're very optimistic no i have but, to but i mean I before to. before we get into that yeah. optimism what is being done from the chamber perspective because you said that it was mentioned at it was mentioned at the national level yes. national level i know the 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 board in trinidad is dealing with it uh they they actually gonna meet out to probably the minister of finance and the other people and they are gonna try to see because it is challenging not just business in tobago it's a big mm -hmm. problem in trinidad it's a big problem in trinidad with these delays in terms of customs and getting goods off the port and stuff so uh we'll see how it goes from there but it's something that we we really can it's not to say it's customs in tobago it's yes. not to say it's customs in customs here in tobago or crown point mm -hmm. it's not a problem here the problem really emanating from trinidad and it's gonna it's not just affecting the tobago businesses but it's affecting all businesses in trinidad right mm -hmm. so so i saw it i i read all the comments a good bit of the comments so we're hoping that uh that that uh this thing can be resolved probably within today or tomorrow but mm -hmm. it's a big problem in trinidad but what is it like what's the process like in terms of just dealing with customs and so on in terms of clearing goods because it's i know it's been a little bit tricky over the last couple of years and all so right on. so 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 you have your you have your goods coming in so you pay for goods you pay for a container load of goods uh what happened is that the the people the shippers will normally send you a bill of quantities uh in advance and uh you get your broker to clear it and then your broker do the necessary because each item has a different classification on customs right mm -hmm. so if you have if it's let me say you're bringing in uh refrigerators you have to go to brewer of standards to get the import license because it have gas in it a special gas and and we only allow the the ozone friendly gas now in trinidad and tobago so if you if your refrigerator don't have that 10 to 1 it won't be clear they will ship it back out to where again so you have to know what you're importing if you're importing lumber then you have to go to plant quarantine and ministry of agriculture for a special permit because they have to get the fumi you have to get it fumi fumigated you have to get all the clear all the information from your from the supplier have they treated the lumber etc etc so there's a lot of long process in terms of clearing a container but as long as you start doing it 
after one, two, three times, you get a custom. You know the routine. You know what you have to do. But what know. about in terms of the cost of clearing goods? Because I, we've been hearing, you know, throughout the time that the cost of clearing goods um, seems to not be fair on those. <laughs> so well, you know, when customs, cust how custom do it is that some items is uh, zero rated in terms of custom duties. Mm -hmm. Some items come with VAT and customs duties. So one pro one product, one container, you can pay VAT, which is 12.5%, and then you have maybe custom duty 30%. So that one container that you bring in, you, you, ain't, you ain't do nothing, you ain't make a dollar, you ain't do nothing. You, you, you paid $500,000 for the goods. Automatically, you're paying something like 45%. To clear that container so you have to find another 200 and something thousand dollars just to clear that container to customs if it's things like lumber that doesn't have uh duties from customs but well, you have to pay the vat but then you have to buy all get all the permits so you you pay a lot so importing goods is plus you have to pay a broker you have to pay the whole unit yeah, the hauler unit that going to the point lisa's port if you don't have a permit there you have to get a, a hauler unit that has permit to go into the port because there are special permits to get inside there when that hauler unit bring it outside then you have to get another hauler unit to take it up from there to bring it to tobago overnight it create back down demerit fees if you pass five days if you can't so it's challenging but as long as you you are aware because let me see you have a container coming it came in this weekend coming you got it or you got it cleared friday you didn't catch your boat the cargo vessel is not sailing for the whole week next week hmm. you only have four days with that container after the four days you start to pay them rich so immediately one week pass by the time you get that to tobago try to unstuff it get it back down to trinidad a week and a half two weeks gone you have to pay a lot of damage for it. So, business is not for the light and faint-hearted. Mm -hmm. It's for people who like challenges, people who could stick it out. So, it costs. So, when people say, oh, things in Tobago are a little more expensive than Trinidad, yes, because we pay for stuff that the Trinidad businessman don't have to pay for. Mm -hmm. And that is what people have to understand. Uh, yes, you can jump on the fast ferry, you could go to Trinidad, you could do your shopping, I might say here, yeah, what well, this thing was ten dollars in Tobago, but is eight dollars in Trinidad. Yes, because there are additional costs to get it here, uh, putting up drivers, etc., etc. So that has been a challenge. Uh, if the THA is lucky to get their port, yeah, if they're lucky to get the port, uh, with all the challenges that will come with that, uh, the international cargo port, then we cut out some of those expenses, right? Uh, if you could bring stuff directly to Tobago. Um, so that is another conversation that we have to look at in 2024. But what is the Chamber's perspective on even like the duties and the taxes and so on imposed? That's by... a surprise. You, there's, there's no position on that. That's the law. Okay. That, that's just the law. The, the, mm -hmm. the Minister of Finance created these laws probably before his time. And uh, those have been the rules from donkey years. Mm -hmm. You know, a, a lot of the custom rules hasn't changed since then so so we we think the problem is that you're, you're not getting your goods cleared fast enough and every time your goods stock up in a warehouse it is problem it is problematic because it causes us money for for having those goods thing because if your container is on the port and custom and credit you still have to pay them rich and it's not your fault so you, you're paying for goods that you just can't sell and it's sitting down there two weeks and and when you come the first you have to pay that damage before the container leave the port <laughs> so so again and there's no credit it's no credit it's, it's just there it's just thing so mm -hmm. so again we 2024 as i are saying a real kind of optimistic eh? <laughs> uh yeah optimistic about 2024 we have to we have to sit down we have to plan we have to strategize we have to change the the, the narrative especially in tobago the narrative has not been good it has not been good and it has not helped nobody in for the last couple of years in terms of the last two years right okay. we have to change how we we strategize how we we deal with trinidad how we deal with central government it has to change uh in terms of if we want stuff we have to be smarter then more aggressive okay. right so you 
as according to our old man up to yesterday, you know you could catch fly with honey instead of vinegar. Yes. You have to use the strategies in terms of how you're gonna get things out of Trinidad. Right? Uh we want more from Trinidad, but we can't fight with Trinidad and expect them to give us more. Right? So the business community don't like the fight. It's not healthy in an environment like that. Because when we go out of Trinidad and Tobago, the first thing Oh, let's always calling and always fighting for something. It doesn't sound good. So we want to uh, we want to change the narrative. If you look at what this executive has been doing for the last year in office, the, the narrative has changed in terms of how we present ourselves, how we think we, we're meeting with people, we're inviting people to Tobago, we're inviting especially the ministers. Uh, we're not going to wait on the THA to invite the ministers. We are the chamber. We are inviting, I think, the next minister we would like to get into Tobago is the Minister of Tourism. Because it's a tourism island. We haven't spoken to the man about tourism. We don't yeah, know what his policy is. When was the last time that he was I don't Tobago? think he has ever been to Tobago officially. Uh, at, in terms of, the only time I know officially when the Minister of Tourism been to Tobago is to open Comfort Suite. But basically, I have not seen anything where he met the Secretary for Tourism officially. He met anybody. So, we're going to invite him to Tobago. We're going to invite the THA to the table. We're going to say, come, let us find out what... Because if primarily outside of the THA, tourism is supposed to be our next revenue, and we're not talking to nobody in, in tourism in Trinidad. You know, one of my biggest pet peeves with, with, with especially the tourism agency, and when we meet with them, I will never let them know. Look at it. Everybody else advertises Grenada advertises in Trinidad, St. Lucia, Barbados. And you look at it, anytime St. Lucia advertises, Grenada advertises the next advertisement and they aggressively advertise it because the market is Trinidad. Have you ever seen a Tobago ad saying come to Tobago? And we right next door. You haven't seen, we have not capitalized on the local domestic market. Yes, we are challenges to get to Tobago. We know that. Let people want to come to Tobago. So we are not seeing the advertisement from the tourism agency. And it's not going to cost you a pong and crown. A simple advertisement saying, come to Tobago. Come to Tobago for Christmas. Get ready for Easter. Let people know Easter is coming up. Get ready for jazz. By now, we should know what jazz. And prepare for the, the summer holidays. And after summer, we're going straight into carnival. You should have advertisements rolling out on TV. So people in their mind saying, they see me, I'm not going to St. Lucia again. I'm coming to this place called Tobago. Because Tobago have better than what St. Lucia and these places have. So that's how we're going to stimulate the local market. We may not have the international tourists coming in numbers that we want. But surely the domestic people is willing to come to Tobago. All right. And with that, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. So please don't go anywhere as we continue our chat this morning with Mr. Demijohn Crookshank. Dear viewers, we are continuing our conversations this morning with the Vice Chairman of the Tobago Division of the Trans Tobago Chamber of Industry and Commerce, and that is Mr. Demi John Crookshank. As we discuss what's happening in Tobago, Christmas, economy, all of that good stuff. So before we went to the break, we were talking about just, you know, hoping now we could get some of the government ministers to come up in Tobago. We already had some. The chamber invited the minister of transport. He, they invited the minister of trade and industry, Ms. Kopi Schoon. And, you know, what came out of those meetings? What do you see? As, has there been any action coming out of those meetings that would benefit the people in Tobago. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. I just needed my Christmas hat and my Christmas mode is now <laughs> kicking in. I'm right, right, ready to party I think. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Minister of Works and Transportation. Mm -hmm. What came out of the meeting is one, uh, all the vessels, the fast ferries will be repaired and will be ready for 2024 including the spirit of the TNT spirit. including the spirit but i leave the port announced there and i get it all right the spirit will be in operations very soon right uh, i can i can see that the cabo star the hiccup let me tell you what the hiccup let me tell you tobago what the hiccup with the cabo star was after the meeting with the minister the minister gave the instruction to make sure the cabo star returned to the gss building in trinidad that is the the where you go and board the fast ferries, right? And and quickly let me just tell you what happened. Uh immediately the port had dredged the, the channel in Port of Spain. Right. 
they removed the wreck there was a wreck in the set in the passageway they removed that everything was go because the cargo star begs a lodging at the cruise ship terminal building in september the port said give me a little time the minister said i don't want any cruise ship coming to this island until we move the cargo star so september there was some sailing they canceled the, the cruise ship from into trinidad in september so october we would have gotten the cargo star moved up to 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 the the gss building hey after all of that negotiation all the preparatory work went in the captain then said uh he wanted the the pier extended so everybody said but captain you could have seen that all the time, you know. The process to get the pier extended is a lengthy one. You have to go through procurement, you have to do all of that. So he decided that he's not going to move the cargo star and until the pier is extended. You can't fight the captain. He's the captain of the vessel. And he cited safety reasons that he needed the pier extended. So the port is now in the process of actually awarding the contract just now. Uh, the tenders went out to every all these people who can do the jobs in Trinidad. And, and the pier will be extended so so that's approximately what two three years no 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 two, mm, some weeks no the, the construction yeah yeah the, okay. con that was, the construction will take about about six weeks to extend the pier right uh indicated by the suppliers right so that is the only thing to move cargo star from cruise ship complex to the gss building which is the where the fast ferries park up where you used to park up before right so that i'm saying very shortly we will not have this problem when you have a cruise ship in trinidad uh, you have you can't sail the cargo star because if there's a cruise ship in Tobago, there's no problem. The cargo star could still operate. The problem is really in Trinidad. So we're hoping uh, within a month or two that problem should be fixed. I was updated by the port on Saturday that the process is going quickly and a contractor will be awarded very shortly. I think it's sometime this week and they will mobilize to get the the pier extended within a six weeks period. Right. So that that cargo star issue should be solved. The Fast Ferries, the Boko Reef, the APT James, uh, the, the TNT Spirit will be finished uh, in terms of repairs. So be back on the schedule shortly. And you have the you have the Galleon Passage that will travel, right? So we'll have four vessels and a cargo cargo vessel. Mm -hmm. And that will the cargo star supposed to to the contract supposed to come to an end, I think is February or sometime. So uh they rebid. And in the meeting with the minister, the, the, the people who use it, which is the chokers, say, we are happy with the cargo star. We know we had a fire, but generally the cargo star have not given any problem. Until uh, we had the RFP to, to build a new one, we made our comments and we sent it back to NITCO. So that should be going out in terms of acquiring a brand new cargo vessel for Trinidad and Tobago. Mm -hmm. right? uh, minister Gopi Schoon was one of the most exciting meetings I think we had in terms of what you can get from export tt what you can get from exim bank there's a lot of financing in exim bank in terms of us financing to to buy machinery to if you're into manufacturing if you're into like say let me use a typical example andy sherry nectar if you want to rehaul his whole operation exim bank will bring in all the machinery give him all the us to be able to buy all of those things so so it, it's an interesting interesting time ahead we're gonna access all of those things uh there's a number of tobegonians getting a lot of grants from export tt i think a number uh what's the name uh beard boss uh they were one of the the recipients in terms of setting up structure in their business getting their business so we're gonna work with the minister of trade we're, gonna, we're actually building out a team in the chamber to see how we can tap into all the different areas. There is even money for marketing Trinidad and Tobago in Exim mm. Bank. Right? There, we didn't even know that. There, there, so the chief secretary was there with his whole team of fin people from finance. The whole team from finance. They were there. They, they were actually like, you have that available? Yeah, because we didn't know about it in tobago we didn't know half of the things so so the people from exim bank the people from export tt tt they did their presentations and they told us this is what is available for the tobago public it is for us now to be hungry enough to go to behind it and yes. go thing uh long line fishing vessels we can look at getting those purchased by export tt because that is exporting commercial fish fishing grounds that we would not even be able to, to access 
right so they indicated that all those things are available so yes we we bring in the ministers in because a lot of the things happening in Trinidad that you just don't know we just don't know uh so you, also, you also launched the help desk for business. The help desk for the TBAS. So right. TBAS is what will know. Somebody has an idea in their head. Mm -hmm. They can come to the chamber and they can come and say, you know, I want to export pilories to, to, to India or pilori to China. How do I do it? And you can get that assistance. I think we're launching all the service from the 15th of January mm -hmm. in the chamber. All the ads will go out on the radio. So you have your your you want to get financing from the bank we can assist you in terms of getting your financing so you have all your receipt books in a box and all these kind of thing and you don't know how to put it in a proper spreadsheet to present it to the bank uh i know mr janet parks and uh, who is our ex-banker our ex-bank manager uh we have jason atta who is also spearheading that committee too um both he and miss parks working on that that tbas so we're going to have people like the bankers, the bank managers, vetting and pre-approving your, your, your loans. So when you finish by TBAS, you should have a document to just walk in a bank and say, listen, this is what I want. Because it's already vetted by people who you actually will go to for financing. So, so that is something exciting coming out of the chamber. And we're going to work in terms of we're working with BDU, working with Venture Capital working with the credit unions and the commercial banks those are the main people who we're going to be working with in terms of so when you see a stamp from tbas going to a financial institution you must know that that was been that has been pre-approved or pre-vetted so when you go there should be shouldn't be a problem so people with a little mama and pop things time for us to get out of that yeah. time for us to grow the business to the next level so a lot of people have sold trader business ramp it up to a to in a limited liability ramp it up to corporate in terms of so you could get big business and get things coming out right so so that is the plan from the chamber point of view to help the small business people we bring in the ministers all the minister we will invite them the next stop is the minister of tourism what if he doesn't show no nah, 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 he can't say that <laughs> he would not say that the chamber no a minister might not come to Tobago because the environment of the Tobago House of Assembly is 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 a little antagonistic with the central government. That has nothing to do with the chamber. I don't care about that. What we care about is what services you are the minister of Trinidad of Tourism, Trinidad and Tobago. Mm. And the minister has indicated in the meeting that the chamber right and the ministers will come, right? Because president in Trinidad, when the chamber in Trinidad invite a minister, we not come and talk business. We, we have politics. We come in to talk business. Mm -hmm. So you, you might have some reservation where the THA is concerned, but there's no reservation. It's all love. It's all good by the chamber. So you come in. Uh, we will be writing him. I'm telling you publicly, we will be writing him. We're gonna be setting up a meeting. We want a meeting before carnival, and we gonna because when the chamber starts up, you know everybody taking their kids out to, to holidays and that kind of stuff. We will write him as soon as the year is turned around. We want to find out what are the challenges. Some developers, like the developer in Roxborough, one of them reached out to me. They said some of the laws is not supporting what they are doing. So they need to, they will come and tell us what their problem. We will, we will represent them. So we, we going, that is the next step. That is the next step we're going, unless something major happen, but we are taking step by step in terms of who minister we want to come to the table. All right. The ultimate is obviously the Minister of Finance. We want to bring him to Tobago after to discuss a couple of things. The airport. Airport is under the Minister of Finance. That's a big ticket item. We want to have him in Tobago. Uh, he always, whenever he see me, then me whenever the chamber ready for me, you know I will come. So we're gonna we're gonna let them the words mean something, right? Uh, we're gonna meet with. Uh, the Minister of Tobago uh, Development uh, and also the Minister of Sport, Chamfer. We're having a meeting with them to discuss where the island could go. Right? So we're not going to leave out anybody. We're going to bring everybody to the table. Um, the Minister of Trade was an exciting one. The, the issue of the quarry came up. The issue of the quarry came up and we could have solved the problem in the room. The Chief Secretary was there. The, the the chairman of spell was there the minister said listen i am the one who grants the license 
And these are the things that we have to do to get the license granted. The, the chairman said, thank you, Madam Minister. We're going to provide you with all the things. We're going to get the people to come to the quarry. We're going to think. She said, uh, you have material there that we won't need in Trinidad. So we will give you an export license to export it. She said that she made that commitment publicly. So we're going to hold the minister to their word. We're going to hold them because we want business. Because if Spell is, is able to export, the truckers go get work. Yes. The gas station go get work. The, the mechanics go get work. The lorry men go get work. The roti shop go get work. The, the supermarket go get business. It's a triple effect. Just mm -hmm. being able to export, eh? Just for the fellas to come in at night because alcohol shop go sell when they finish driving. And I hope it's when they finish driving. They go sit down and take a drink. That is what you want. You want the place to be busy. Mm -hmm. And that is the environment that we are going into in 2024. Mm -hmm. Right? Certainly quite a lot of optimism coming from you. <laughs> now, I, of course, the last few minutes that we have here, I want to spend some time in just speaking about just the real the relationship with the THA at this point in time and just your view over the past year before we get into next year. <laughs> uh, that is that is so, so interested. Uh, the THA has done some good in the last two years and the THA has made a lot of mistakes also in the last two years. Mm -hmm. But the mistakes can continue, right? Uh, the good thing is that we have a very good working and very good relationship with the chief secretary very very good the chief secretary actually said to us he want quarterly meetings with the chamber set quarterly meetings i could tell you now we're meeting the chief secretary on the 4th of january the chief the four months from that we're going to meet the chief secretary on the 4th of whenever that is or may or whenever that is the next meeting going to be the 4th of what probably july independence day in america so he said, listen, I'm putting in my diary. These are the days I want to meet with the chamber. Let us discuss. So what we're going to want to be having now is that we are having an, an avenue to sit down with the chief secretary and the executive council members and say, listen, we've been observing what you have been doing. This is good. This is not good in our recommendation. It's, not, it's for them to take it. I can tell you. The THA have done good in terms of the eye surgery thing in terms of ministry of health and i would commend the secretary for health she did an excellent job right the secretary for housing remember when they gave out that seven million dollars in terms of backlog for people they did a good job with that yeah. the secretary for tourism in terms of the cruise ship arrivals they have really and truly gone beyond and they, they, from her projection they want to get more cruise ship next year good job they have fallen long a lot in things that should have been done the secretary for education school repairs uh although the first one when she came in it took long for people to pay uh it was handed over to eid cut eid cut is very efficient in terms of payments so we've seen places like so when the bank see eid cut they will give you funding for that right so we've seen some good they made a lot of mistakes the fight with trinidad was not necessary from a business point of view because it hurt people in Tobago. The Secretary for Works, I see he ramping up in terms of Google Patch and other things that they're doing. You have to keep people active on the island because we have loans and we have commitments to pay. Mm -hmm. So so it's an opportunity for us to sit down with them, go through, flesh out. Uh, fishing is a big thing. It has a lot of money in it. We have to sit down with AFFA. We have to sit down with the Secretary for Agriculture, TATCO, and see how we can get probably a couple more boats like Capital of Paradise here to fish between here and Africa. You realize there's a big Africa liking to Tobago now. Eh? Uh, and if you don't know, there's there's a whole thing. The chamber, the national, the national chamber is having a trade show from the 10th of March to the 7th of March in, in, in uh, at Ghana. Right? A lot of members, about 10 members from the Tobago division already booked to go that right so we are now going out to see what markets we have to start to export ghana is a big market in africa they have a lot of money we want to bring back most of that money here and start to develop tobago so we're not going to wait on the tha we don't want to wait on anybody we are going as a private sector and look for the opportunities and bring it back here to tobago and that is the plan for 2024 now, you spoke a lot of optimism about just the business community, but are you seeing anything optimistic with uh, the next year, next two years of this current CHA administration? If the next 
the current THA want to get anything done, they have to change how their approach is. It's a reality. Mm -hmm. You can't do the same thing and expect the same results to be different. They have to sit down. The chief secretary at some point in time will have to invite the prime minister and the cabinet of Trinidad and Tobago to a round table discussion to say, listen, this is where we want to go to carry Tobago forward. Uh, however, the politics, leave the politics for election time. The management of the island is, is one that you think. I could tell you, if I was sitting in the executive council, we, the Tobago House of Assembly, would not have paid for that connector road in Cove. Never. Mm. Never, never, never. I would have gone to the Prime Minister and said, listen, you're building an airport. We need a road. Let Trinidad pay for it. And the THA will supervise it. I would not have taken $64 million out of Tobago's money to pay for that road. I would not. I would have taken that money and do a lot of other programs. Right? So, so you have to actually operate smarter instead of how you go about. At the end of the day, Trinidad has over the economy of trinidad from the last meeting we had with a sub cabinet thing is that the government puts in about 57 billion dollars in terms of the economy and the private sector puts in about 60 billion dollars in terms of to run the economy in trinidad so the trinidad economy runs on about a hundred and something billion dollars a year right because the private sector literally matches a lot of things or the, the, the thing do that's why you see a lot of private sector business going on in trinidad you have to now flip that in Tobago and see how the private sector can help you. But we can't be on one side of the TV cussing and you're on the next side of the TV cussing. That it wouldn't make sense. Mm -hmm. It also is the same thing for central government. And the chief secretary have to change, they have to change their plan, they have to change their strategy. Listen, invite people to Tobago. Let people feel warm and welcome. The minister was happy to come to Tobago in Minister of Trade, was happy to come to, and she gave us a set of information, information that the Chamber and the Tobago House of Assembly did not know. So you have to really change how you, you manage, how you think the, the tone have to be. We could cuss in a room. We could cuss out in a room, pelt chair behind each other. But when you come out, you have to change the narrative because the investors, in terms of the bankers, mm -hmm. they are looking on and they're saying, wow, I don't think I want to head to Tobago right now because Tobago too aggressive and so you have to change how you want to because at the end of the day a lot of approvals come from Trinidad and that is how you have to have to fight fight this fight all right well um so we are just about out of time this morning but you gave us quite a mobile <laughs> phone spent the whole hour with us as we just get into you know just some of the things for this year and what's to come for next year yes. and certainly a lot of optimism coming from the to the business chamber yes. and you know we're we're looking forward to seeing the fruits of those meetings and the, uh, of those things especially the help for the small businesses here in Tobago yeah. to make sure that we can access those grants that are available through central government. Yeah. So thank you again, Mr. Crookshank, for being on with us. No problem. And, and you know, have a very safe 2023 Christmas, you know, uh, and I hope that no negative thing in terms of robberies or anything like that happen uh, this year. Mm -hmm and business people be very vigilant the next couple of days people desperate who don't have money will try all kind of things so again i want to wish tobago updates you know you all work very fine i hope management is treating you all well uh sometime this week and i'll give you a little bonus be the business community can pay it, but i hope that tobago updates you all have worked fine and you know we hope to see you in 2024 and we have a lot of work in tobago to do all right, thank you again. And viewers, have a safe and wonderful day. And we will see you again tomorrow. Bye for now.